Hi, my name's Ian Murray. I'm with the Biomedical Engineering and Assistive Technology Lab at Curtin University. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of uh, the projects we've been working on recently. The first one is the complete reading system for vision impaired users. This is a technology that allows us to present uh, written information to people with vision impairment in an accessible format. It adheres to the standards for digital talking books that are used worldwide, but the main advantage is we can handle uh, graphics. And by that I mean we can have a graphical representation, a graph, mathematical expression within the document and automatically create a description of that expression or graphic uh, that is comprehensible to the vision impaired user. It works with several formats, both uh, doc, word formats, uh, docx, um, pdf, etc. So here's some examples. So we've got an image here of our early prototypes, uh, which is just a small embedded controller connected to a hardware text -to speech engine um, and a keyboard to uh, access the book and navigate the points throughout the, uh, uh, the document. To give you an idea of how it speaks, we've got an image of a mathematical expression, fairly simple one in the top right corner there, um, and we'll hear how that sounds. X index 1, power K, plus X index 2, power K, plus X index 3, power K, plus continue until X index N, power K, equal 0. That is a description created only from the image. There is no human input here, there is no optical, sorry, there is optical character recognition, but there is no entry of the text itself. It's purely based on an image. Next example we have is a simple uh, bar graph. This is a bar chart which indicates the average price of advertisements of five different channels in a year. Vertical X shows million dollars, NBC channel is 172 million dollars, ABC channel is 166, Fox channel is 120, CBS channel is 86, WB channel is 39 million dollars, the next project I'll talk about is our indoor navigation system for people with vision impairment. This is an infrastructure free system that doesn't require the building owner or building managers to implement any infrastructure within their uh, building. It uh, discovers the environment from sensors that are on board uh, and builds a lightweight map from that information. Um, we can also share that information through crowdsourcing, so if one vision impaired person moves through the building, they will pick up the information that will be passed on to the next person that enters the building. Basically it works on this sort of system. We use the mobile telephone or smartphone uh, as a communication system for the vision impaired person, uh, but the uh, sensors are a separate item that we either put in the hip pocket or mount on the chest in the case of the camera system. We base this on gait analysis. Now gait analysis is um, something that's been worked on for many years but we've developed our own system and sensors that uh, allow us to do this in a very economical, efficient manner. Uh, we can see here that we can identify from this single thigh-mounted IMU, inertial measurement unit, the uh, various stages in the human gait uh, stride, uh, and it's a highly accurate method of doing so. So we'll have a look at some videos of how we've utilised this in other areas of research as well which includes cerebral palsy, neurosurgery in the case of foot drop. This video was taken in our motion analysis lab. This is a 28 camera system, we can see those cameras up on the wall with a green light, uh, to validate our inertial measurement unit sensors. And in this case we have Jenny who is a totally blind person. Uh, she has sensors on her white cane and three sensors on her leg, uh, thigh, shin and foot. Um, <coughs> she will walk down the path and we will capture the data from the inertial measurement units uh, and also from the camera systems and make sure that, that the reading is correct. And from this we can tell how many steps she's taken and calculate the distance travelled and using the magnometers we can get direction as well. This next example is a pre-operative capture of a patient with foot drop and as we can see he's unable to lift his foot uh, or his toes as he walks. We capture the data, we model the effect, uh, look at the seriousness of his condition and then we can compare it to the post-operative. And here we have someone post-operative. Um, quite a significant improvement in his gait there. This allows the uh, surgeons to 
more accurately and uh, uh, non-subjectively, objectively create a scale of impairment for each of their patients. Um, and this assists with when to operate, early diagnosis, etc. The final one we have is a case of children with cerebral palsy. And in this case, we're using the same sensors to capture the movement of the upper limbs to assess the treatment effectiveness of uh, splints or other exercises that they're doing. This is a fairly simple task that the child undertakes. This is just a um, normal child. Uh, he doesn't actually have cerebral palsy. We use it as a test case. Um, and they perform a particular task. We log the data from that task and compare it over time uh, to see if there's any improvement. This also helps with early diagnosis, uh, treatment effectiveness and other medical attributes.